Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our online service on this February the 14th, which is, that's an important date. 14, February 14. Okay, so if you forgot, um, maybe find some time to not forget and do what you need to do today. Happy Valentine's Day. Moving on very quickly. Thank you for taking time to join us for our SCF online service. We have a great service plan for you. For just under an hour, we're going to share with you a time of worship. And we have a message from Pastor Lenny as we continue on in his series in the book of Ephesians. The Reinhardts are joining us later on and Pastor Ken and Jenna will be here as well to share a few things. But before we get to all of that, we want to share with you some updates and some news. And so with that, welcome to SCF online. We've all heard the news this past week from the government that restrictions are looking like they're easing up and at time of recording we don't know exactly what they are but we as a staff are and we will continue to be in conversation with our board regarding what that looks like for us. We aren't wanting to put an exact date on when we'll be opening our doors but we are wanting to communicate to you that we are getting ready. If you have been a regular volunteer in any of our Sunday morning ministries here at the church, please stay tuned for emails and updates as we continue to prepare. Did you know that throughout all of this lockdown and social distancing that we are still having a dedicated team of volunteers that are meeting and praying just for you? First of all, if that is you, thank you so much to the ladies prayer group, to the men's prayer group, and everyone who takes a quick second after they get in a prayer chain email. Thank you so much. Secondly, while it may have looked a little different, uh, like meeting on Zoom, it's incredible to know that we have a church that is supportive and praying for you. I've even received a, a, a phone call every now and then asking, how can we pray for you? Why am I saying all this? If you would like us to pray with you and for you, we are ready and waiting to do that. Simply go to prayer.solochurch.ca to fill out a digital form for us to pray with you. Hey, Sobble Church family, it's Pastor Ken here, and I am excited to give you a little bit of a video tour uh, today and uh, show you some of the projects that we've just been working on uh, in the building uh, as we push forward to see the construction project come to an end. Uh, we fully understand that the building is not the church, uh, but we are excited about what this facility is going to be able to do and how it's going to serve our community and uh, how it's going to be used to impact lives for Christ in the days to come. So let me give you a little bit of a tour and show you some of the ways uh, that we're continuing to push forward with that. As you can see, uh, this far end of the uh, auditorium is finished. Uh, the baseboard's on, it's looking great, and the, uh, the new expanded seating area is ready. This is our new water room and it houses the new water storage tanks uh, where the water is trucked in and uh, supplied to the rest of the facility, making sure that we have good clean water uh, for all of our needs here at the church. The new expanded lobby is finished and ready, aside from some furnishings. Uh, it's going to be a great space for lots to fellowship in before and after services. The new washrooms just off of the uh, new lobby are just about ready to be used. They're just uh, putting up the remaining uh, soap dispensers and hand uh, towel dispensers. The library shelves are in place and they've already started to work on uh, getting the books out and going through them and uh, getting rid of some of the older ones, making sure that we have some great resources uh, here in our church library for you and your families. This will be the kids' check-in station uh, on Sunday mornings uh, where uh, families will check their kids in for the kids' ministry. The new nursery is, is ready to go, which is a great thing because we've got lots of babies on the way. The floor in, in these new kids' uh, Sunday school rooms uh, should be going in in the next couple of months, right through uh, into this new uh, smaller auditorium where they will have their worship space, and this will all be completed and uh, wrapping up shortly. Coming in the back entrance of the church, uh, entering into the kids' uh, area, or uh, heading upstairs uh, to the offices. This back uh, landing entryway is going to receive some uh, upgraded flooring and it's going to be a nice welcoming space for people coming into the office area. You can see that there's drywall still being completed in this section. Where the youth room was is going to be just a large multi-purpose uh, meeting space. This is where Kathy's office was as well and those walls have been taken out and getting ready uh, in here for uh, drywall and for new flooring and just to finish this room up. 
a lot of little drywall repairs uh, still happening that uh, needed to be fixed up from the renovations. This is a new office that is a spare office and it's ready to go and usable. And our new senior pastor's office is just being completed as well. And uh, that's on the other side of this wall. Office is, is quite large and is uh, a nice space for our senior pastor. And this is the hallway that goes back down to that rear entry uh, point at the back of the church. And so you can still see some drywall going in here, as well as some flooring uh, to be finished up. All in all, this is going to be a great space uh, for all of our ministry needs. And so we're super excited about that. We're super excited for you to see it in person. Or we're excited to see you in person. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of what uh, is still happening here around the church building. For the past few weeks, we've been giving you updates about our kids ministry and our student ministry, and we've heard some great reports coming back from you as well that you've appreciated. Thank you so much. Here with our kids updates this week is not Isidore the crazy scientist, sorry, uh, but Jenna is here to share with you what's going on in kids ministry. Well, good morning, Salvo Church. Jenna here, and I am so excited to be with you again this morning and to lead our kids into another week of SCF Kids Online. Now kids, I'm sure you've noticed this already because we've been talking about the life of David over the last several weeks, but I'm wondering if you've noticed something interesting about this David guy. I mean, the first time that we met him was when God chose him to be the next king after Saul. Then he wins this battle against a giant Goliath. And next, Saul tries to kill him on multiple occasions, but David chooses to show mercy instead and spares his life. Then he shows a great amount of kindness to Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. I mean, can this guy do anything wrong? It seems like David's life is so easy and he's just perfect in everything that he does. But in today's story, David's life takes a bit of a turn. He makes a few mistakes, well, a few kind of big mistakes, and to be honest, he has some sin in his heart. You wanna know the worst part though? David tries to cover up his sin. He thinks that if he hides all the mistakes that he's made, well, then he won't get caught. He'll be able to get away with all those bad things he was doing. You know how the story ends though, right? Yeah, David gets caught in his sin. And like this cup is almost impossible for us to fix it so that we can cover up the holes and it can hold water again. It's kind of like our lives. Sin breaks us, and the only way for us to have our lives fixed is if God restores it. So why don't you go ahead and check out kidsonline.salvalchurch.ca and see how God deals with David's sin. Okay, grade six to 12, this part is for you, so pay attention. Have you ever heard these rules? Uh, look both ways before you cross the street. Actually, that's, that's a good rule. Uh, maybe here's another rule, use your manners, or don't eat with your mouth full. No, sorry, don't talk with your mouth full. Ooh. Uh, don't shoplift, don't speed, don't hit your siblings. A lot of don'ts in this list. What about some do's? Do your chores, do your homework. Um, don't be late. Uh, if, if you're not on time, you're late. If you're, if you're not early, you're not on time. Uh, that was my dad coming out at me, sorry. We are surrounded by rules. Our lives are ruled literally by rules. They can get frustrating and suffocating. We can feel like we're, we're trapped, that we're chained down, that we're locked up. All I want is my freedom. That's that's like the anthem of a, a teenager, of a kid. Well, this month in our teaching series, we're going through the book of James, and we're learning that all the rules we have really come down to just two. Two easy, simple rules. That's it. Seems easy enough, right? Join us Wednesday nights for a Zoom call at 7, and then our teaching video at 7.45 on YouTube as we learn what these two rules are and how we can live them out. You can find out all that you need to know on our website, sawwellchurch.ca slash students.
we are preparing to celebrate Lent. Lent is 40 days of spiritual preparation before Easter. It begins Wednesday, February 17th, and concludes the Saturday before Easter. Many Christians observe this time by fasting or giving up something to spend extra time reading scripture and praying. We set aside time to reflect on Jesus Christ, to consider His suffering, sacrifice, life, death, burial, and resurrection. You may choose to give up a meal each day or a habit like watching TV, maybe a particular food like bread or a drink like coffee. Maybe you lay aside a hobby or instead of giving up, you instead give each day to something to a worthy cause. Whatever you do, it is a sacrifice to help us focus on the sacrifice our Savior made for us. Why is Lent 40 days long? The number 40 holds special significance in the Bible. The rain in Genesis lasted 40 days. The Israelites wandered 40 years, and Moses waited 40 days on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. Jesus spent 40 days fasting in the wilderness when he was tempted. Why do we start Lent on a day called Ash Wednesday? This day is called Ash for two biblical reasons. First, ashes represent death. Christians are called to die to self and live for Christ. Second, ashes were also tied to repenting. During this time, we reflect on and confess any sin that God brings to mind. While Lent is a time of remembering Christ's suffering, to reflect and to think about sacrifice, both his and ours. It is also a time to celebrate our relationship with God. I call on you to observe this time with me. As families, this can be a great time to share with your children what Easter is all about. Several weeks ago, God laid on my heart what I was to give up during this time. It's something I've used every day since I was a young teen, and I say it won't be easy. But I want to replace it by taking a prayer walk every day. I'm looking forward to drawing closer to my Lord, and I hope you will join me. Let's together journey closer to the heart of God. Will you join me? Well, that is all the announcements that we have for you at this point. Please stay tuned to our website and social media for more updates as we have them throughout the week. Uh, we'll get to get those to you as soon as we possibly can. For the past few weeks, we've showcased other voices and other faces in the area of worship. We think it's important to be simply reminded that we are part of a larger body, a bigger community, and that we're, we're joining others as we worship today, wherever we are. This week, I'm happy to share and invite you to join in worship as we are led by the team at The Meeting House. The Meeting House is based out of Oakville, Ontario, if you don't know, and they're also part of our Be In Christ Church family. This morning, as we prepare to worship, as we prepare to reflect and to pray, allow me to pray uh, for you and with you as we move into this time of worship. Will you bow with me, please? God, thank you for this time that you've provided for us to gather together. While we're not physically together, we are brought together at this time through your Son. As we prepare our hearts and our minds, as we put aside the distractions, as we purposely seek to spend time with you, to hear from you, we are thankful. We are thankful for the promise you gave to us, that when we call to you, you hear us, that when we ask for you, you come to us, that when we seek your comfort and peace, you give it to us. God, I'm thankful for our larger community in faith, for the reminder that we are not alone, but that we are surrounded by our brothers and our sisters. I'm thankful that we can reach out to our faith community at any time, and that we'll find that peace and that comfort and that support that you promise through them and through your son. 
God, as we worship this morning, as we reflect today, as we watch and as we listen, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be welcomed into each home, into each heart that is joining with us here. Praise all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song, cause you are good.
about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Oh, Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of this church. Cause every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. As we prepare to hear from Pastor Lenny, I'm happy to welcome to the screen today, Mel and Marg Reinhardt, as they read and pray for us before the message. Today's Bible reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and he gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. 
He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. He has showered His kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us His mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill His own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news, that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Heavenly Father, we come before you to ask your blessing upon us. We ask you, Father, to uh, be with us this day as we uh, come together to worship. We realize, Father, we're in our individual homes, but we ask you to Help us to feel the uh, unity of uh, having one with another as we are here together for service. Father, we ask your blessing on this situation that we're in right now. We realize that COVID has uh, been a difficult time for us and a difficult time for a lot of people. So we pray for uh, those people that are going through health issues as a result of COVID. And we pray for the frontline workers who are caring for them. We realize that in Great Bruce, we've been kind of blessed to, to be uh, just on the fringes of it, but there's certainly places, Father, that have been hit and hit very hard. And we ask your blessing upon those uh, centers and places where uh, COVID is running rampant. We ask you for your care for the workers. We ask you for care for the patients. We ask you for your blessing in those various situations. We pray, Father, for those of our uh, group who are going through some health issues, and there's lots of them. Uh, There are people who are recovering at home, people who are awaiting surgery, people who are going through uh, difficult uh, times trying to figure out what the actual issues are. And we ask you, Father, just to be with uh, them, help them to feel the closeness of uh, people who care uh, around them, uh, knowing that their church family cares for them and is praying for them. We ask your blessing in all that's going on with those various health issues uh, and the other issues that are going on. We pray for for families and for uh, marriages, Father. And we pray for the blessing as we go through this lockdown procedure of, of the stress it puts on family situations. We ask you, Father, to bless our, our people and bless, uh, bless us as we try to serve those around us. We ask you to give us wisdom as we uh, reach out and try to uh, love each other as you'd, you've loved, loved us. Father, we ask your special blessing on our, our pastoral staff who are trying so diligently to serve you. We pray for uh, your blessing on Lenny, on Ken and Andy, and on Kathy as we try to be Salvo Christian Fellowship and the work that's going on here. And as they lead us, we ask you, Father, to help us to get behind uh, their their efforts to do things and be supportive. We ask your special blessing on uh, Pastor Dave, who's uh, at home, and we ask for uh, miraculous healing in his life. We ask you to be with him and Lisa and, and the family. We ask you, Father, to uh, just be with all that's going on at Salvo Christian these days as we still go into this new year of 2021. We ask you to uh, go with us this day and bless us and bless our time together. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Today, we are celebrating, for today is February 14th, Valentine's Day. Men, did you remember to get your wife something special? It's also special because we are looking into the book of Ephesians, and we start with a great passage. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14, chosen and blessed. 
And our main thought today is that God has chosen us to be followers and blessed us with incredible riches. He was quite small for his age, but he loved football and eagerly waited for the opportunity to play. But first he had to be picked to play on that Sandlot team. Every time his neighborhood friends got called, he knew the pain, the pain of waiting to be chosen. He also knew from past experience the pain of being chosen last. Even years later, he can still recall the nervous tension that built up as each player was picked and the bench became smaller and smaller. Finally, he was picked last by the unfortunate captain who had the last pick. Have you ever experienced pain and embarrassment in your life? Well, I have. For that was my story. Chosen last for the crime of being too small, too slow. From my earliest years, I dreamed of playing professional football. I can recall vividly my 10th Christmas when I received a box containing a football helmet, jersey, shoulder pads, kicking tee, and a football, all with my favorite football team's colors. Wow, I was so excited. I would play for hours on my front yard alone, kicking the ball to myself, even punting it, throwing passes. Oh, I remember it. I so wanted to play one day for a professional team. In fact, I, I mastered the art of playing complete games by myself. And, and you know what was amazing? I always caught the touchdown pass at the end of the game. Now, I have to tell you, I was heartbreaking at age, uh, heartbroken at age 15 when I had to give up my dream. Why? Well, because I was only 4 foot 11 and 120 pounds when I graduated high school. There just was no call for players that size or that slow, especially when nobody seemed to want you on their team. But God used those rejections in my life. The Apostle Paul speaks immediately at the beginning of Ephesians about being chosen by God. And, and that was my story. Age 16, God called me to ministry. And I surrendered my life to him to follow his ways. And that dream that I had of becoming a professional football player, oh, it faded so quickly. Why does Paul talk about being chosen by God? Well, I believe because when we recognize that we are chosen by God, that's where our journey of faith begins. On God's playing field, he doesn't choose those who are the most talented and skilled first and leave the dregs for last. In fact, verse 4 tells us that he chose us before he even created the world. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Some would place God in the category of coaches who instinctively leave some off the roster, never choosing them. Some believe God arbitrarily picks who he wants to join him in heaven while damning all others to hell. And this doctrine is wrapped up into a nice package and entitled Calvinism. But I've never met one Calvinist yet who thinks that they weren't chosen by God. The argument goes that we all deserve hell because we have sinned, so any that God chooses to save is a great testament of His grace. Now, I want to admit publicly that I don't understand fully the balance between God's sovereignty 
and his free will. I don't have all the answers. I also say that some verses seem to exclude our free will in the equation. But what do you do with the other verses? Like Romans 10, 9, that all who call on the name of God will be saved. Or Titus 2, 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I also, also certainly don't agree with the Arminianist position that we get to heaven based on our good works. So what do we do with Ephesians chapter 1 where Paul tells us no less than four times that we are chosen by God? I personally believe God did choose us. In fact, I believe John 3, 17 and 18 answers this. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who believes not has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. God chose all mankind to be his, but he gives us a choice to believe or reject him. A while back, a Calvinist friend and I were discussing this, and I told him I might believe Calvinism if he could answer me but one question. He accepted my challenge and asked, okay, what's the question? And I said, if God is the righteous judge that Scripture says that he is and that I believe that he is, then how could he condemn many to hell while saving a few who committed the same crimes. Would we accept this on earth? In fact, would we even call the judge a righteous judge for the same crimes? If he condemned one person to life in prison and set a second person free for the exact same crime, well, I don't believe we would. So quite simply, I believe that God chose us just as he chose those who refuse him and won't follow him. After all, didn't he say that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life? We have a choice. As Revelation 3.20 teaches, here I am. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Simply put, we have to open the door. When we accept his salvation, he has blessings for us according to Ephesians chapter 1. What are these blessings? Well, I want to begin by saying this morning, they are numerous so let's first look at our blessings from God the Father. Verse 4, he has chosen us. Don't think I need to say anything more about that. Secondly, he has adopted us. The Greek word for adoption to sonship is a legal term referring to the full legal standing of an adopted male heir in Roman culture. In God's kingdom, women and men have equal footing in adoption. The New Testament states two separate forms and blessings of our adoption into God's family. First of all, we are adopted with full and immediate riches in Christ. In, in some countries, when children are adopted, they have to wait to claim their inheritance, but not so in God's family. Secondly, also one day we will receive the adoption of our redeemed and glorified eternal bodies. Romans 8.23. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. What a great fish that is. 
when we're thinking about the blessings of God, thirdly, he has accepted us. First, he chose us. Secondly, he adopted us. And then in verse 6, he accepted us. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Some translations read, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved, which literally means that God accepted us. A great New Testament analogy is where Paul writes in the book of Philemon, for Philemon to accept his runaway slave Onesimus back, but not as a slave, but as a brother. Next we see the blessings from God the Son. What are those blessings from God the Son? Well, first he has redeemed us. Verse 7. What does redeem mean? It means to purchase and set free by paying a price. It's been said that there were 60 million slaves in the Roman Empire, and they were bought and sold like pieces of furniture. But a slave could be bought and set free, and he would truly be set free. This is what Christ did by paying for our salvation by his own blood. He set us free from the bondage of our sin. He bought us back from the clutches of Satan. John 8, 36 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Second blessing from God the Son is that He has forgiven us. The second part of verse 7. The word forgiven means to carry away. It reminds us of the Day of Atonement when the high priest would take two goats. He would kill the one and sprinkle its blood on the mercy seat. But the other was called the scapegoat, and it would be sent out into the wilderness with the symbolism that our sin is carried away to be remembered no more. There's no written accusation that stands against those whose sin has been forgiven. Romans 8.1, there is now therefore no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Thirdly, God the Son has revealed God's will to us in verses 8 to 10. He doesn't want us to be wandering and lost. He wants us to know His path. Sometimes that path isn't shown to us except a step ahead. But He wants us to, to live in His will. And fourthly, God the Son has made us an inheritance But guess what? We also are an inheritance given by God the Father to his Son. Five times in John 17, Jesus refers to his followers as those whom God the Father had given to him. We are God's inheritance. And then we come to verse 13, where we find the blessings from God, the Holy Spirit. And we're told, first of all, that He has sealed us. Verse 13, what is the significance of the sealing? It speaks of a finished transaction. When legal documents are processed, they are stamped with an official seal signifying the completion of the transaction. And I believe This refers to our security and salvation. It also implies ownership. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, We were bought with a price. We are gods, and that means we no longer do as we want with our own money, with our own bodies, with our own time, and with our own talent. For our time and talents and money and bodies are gods. It means security and protection. The Roman seal on Jesus' grave carried this meaning. It meant that the the tomb was secure and it was being protected. 
And finally, it was a mark of authenticity. Romans 8, 9 says, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. We get all those things because the Holy Spirit has sealed us. Secondly, the Holy Spirit has given us an earnest. In other words, a guarantee. Verse 14, the word earnest is amazing. In Paul's day, it meant the down payment to guarantee the final purchase of some commodity or piece of property. The Holy Spirit living in us is the down payment or first installment of our eternal life with God. While we believe that God has chosen and blessed us, we have freedom and power to live in his name. Do you truly believe that God has chosen you? That he has blessed you? If you do, you have freedom in his name. Think of it this way. It's like the last name Fonstock or Disher or Hamel are now the name Jehovah. Why? Because we are God's children. It's not Lenny Fonstock. It's Lenny Fonstock Jehovah. I'm a child of the King. We have all the rights and blessings of God. And I want to encourage you to reread this passage, Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. And remind yourself of God's rich blessings, his goodness that he directed towards you. Why remember? Because remembering and living in God's blessings insulate us from fear and anxiety that is all around us today. God bless you. I trust that you are secure in his salvation. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, please, please stay tuned to our social media, our website, our emails, maybe a, a carrier pigeon if that shows up on your front door. As soon as we have information to pass on to you, we'll be letting you know. Now, allow me to close with this verse from Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.